Okay, so for part A, f prime of negative 1, what did y'all get for an answer on that? Negative 2 thirds, that's correct. So one thing to pay attention to is what this is a graph of. It's a big difference if this is f of x, f prime of x, or even f double prime. Completely different information. So really, we were just trying to find that y value. Okay, so this isn't so much calculus. <clears throat> But I thought about this slope. It's going down one, right three. Did you consider looking at that? Okay, and so if this is at, and this was hard for someone to see yesterday, so make sure you're paying attention here if you didn't get this as an answer. This one was at negative three zero. So if I go down some and right some, this is at, now at negative 2, what would his y value be? Okay, because that's the slope. And then if we did it again, now this is x is negative 1, y is negative 2 thirds, which is what we were trying to find in part A. And if I did it again, what would this y value be? So do you see how it's going down? One third, down one third, down one third, and then you can confirm and see that you hit this other point. So you can do that now if you didn't get that. Okay. All right, that's, um, I don't have a scoring guide to this, or if there is one. Um, this was actually made up by the textbook company, I think, so it's not like a released AP question. But if you guys do Google search, released AP questions, first derivative graphs, you'll see that there's a ton of these out there. They look similar, I just didn't pull from those. Okay, I think part B is probably also one point. <clears throat> so where is the second derivative? What is the second derivative at negative one? And what do y'all think about that one? I don't think it's zero. Any other guesses? Okay, the big idea that you guys are not getting out of this then is derivative is like slope. The answer is right here. We've already thought about it. You guys just aren't making the connection. It's negative one third. The slope, and this is what you need to write to yourself because this is a, a basic slope of f of x tells you about the first derivative. Therefore, the slope of the first derivative, which is what we have the graph of, tells you about the second derivative. Derivative and slope, same idea. So at negative 1, right here, it has a slope of negative 1 third. It's really just understanding the question at that point, because you all can find slope. That, very, very, very common. Okay, you guys okay with part B now? If you missed that one? Okay. Uh, C, find the x-coordinate of each inflection point on the graph f from negative 5 to 4. Okay. My, again, I don't have a scoring guide here, but all FRQs are out of 9 points. My guess is this part's out of three, because I think there's three answers. So did anybody else get three answers? Okay, what'd you get? Should it be, is it negative three, zero, one? Or am I sure? I mean, it might be. I don't know. We're going to work it out to be sure, but. Aren't inflection points just when it changes, right? When what changes? The slope, or like the uh, slope, wait. Right? Slope of what? <laughs> If it, when it like changes from concave up to 
Okay, so yeah, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Did anybody else get those values? I'm getting no confirmation there. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. So when you first read this, do you know the answer immediately? Of course not. You have to dig deeper. You have to say, what is an inflection point? Inflection point is where it changes concavity. A point where it changes concavity. And knowing concavity, I need to think about the second derivative. Second derivative is negative is concave down. Second derivative is positive is concave up. So how, how am I supposed to know, if this is a first derivative graph, how am I supposed to know when the second derivative is positive? Yeah. It just tells you? Okay. So yeah, technically in the directions, when the second derivative equals zero, it's likely to be a point of inflection, so that's true. Reading the directions again, they're kind of giving that one away. <clears throat> but what's happening at negative four? Still relative. Of, it's not the relative max of the function. Of the first derivative. So again, I'm going to highlight this now because this is what seems is holding you back here. If you want to know something about the second derivative and you have the first derivative graph, you need to be thinking about slope. Slope of the first derivative is how you get information about the second derivative. Derivative means slope. So to me it looks like the derivative was positive, then it was negative. Still negative, then it's positive. Then it was negative. You see how I'm getting those values? Yeah. Slope is positive, the second derivative is positive. The slope is negative, the second derivative is negative. So what x values is that changing at? Negative four, Those would be your points of inflection because that's where the second derivative is changing from positive to negative or negative to positive. We know that information about the second derivative because the second derivative is the slope of the first derivative. Derivative is just like slope. I think, um, <clears throat> well, I won't say this for y'all, but in general, students the biggest mistake you can make in this section is to just try to memorize stuff. Oh, it's the max and mins. Well, it depends on what graph you're talking about. If you're talking about the function, no. If you're talking about the first derivative, I guess, but that's rarely useful. What is useful is to know what a point of inflection is, when it occurs, and then being able to seek that information about the second derivative. Okay. Um, so my guess would be three points. It didn't say justify there, so um, five. So this last part is probably four points. Just my guess. It says if g of x is f of x plus sine squared x, is it increasing or decreasing at this time? Justify your answer. Okay. If you run out of time, you at least picked increasing or decreasing, right? Because you, you're get, even if you're not sure, you could possibly get a point if you just guessed right. So, um, at least that. So, same idea. You need to work backwards. When you guys look at this and you say, where's it increasing and decreasing, this weird function? I have no idea. You have to say, how am I supposed to know when it's increasing or decreasing? Increasing, decreasing would be when you think about the first derivative. When the first derivative is positive, it's concave up. Or concave up. Increasing, when the first derivative is negative, it's decreasing. That's my hint. I need the first derivative. 
So the derivative of g of x would be the derivative of f of x. The derivative of sine squared. Remember with trig functions, we like to put the square here, but it means this. You'd have to do power rule, bring the power down, lower the power by one, and chain rule. So my guess would be you probably would get one point if you took that derivative correct. That'd probably be one of the four points. And I just want to know at negative pi over 4. So this stuff to the right, we're going to have to apply the unit circle a couple times. Sine of negative pi over 4 would be negative square root of 2 over 2. Cosine of negative pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. So this ends up being, all that comes out to be negative 1. Okay, how am I supposed to know the first derivative at negative pi over 4? What should we be looking for at um, on our graph here to answer that? Okay, so that's probably going to be like, I don't know. Pi is 3.14 over 4, so it's going to be less than 1. I don't know, somewhere about right here. You're trying to find this y value. Well, let's say I was almost out of time. This y value is definitely something negative, right? So if this is a negative number, a negative number minus 1 is going to be negative, right? So that means the answer to this should be decreasing. So probably one point if you just identified that decreasing is correct. Probably one point for the derivative. I don't know. It would just change from FRQ to FRQ, but if you had time, you probably need to be more specific than just some negative number. So how I would do that would probably be with an equation of a line. When x is negative 1, I've already thought about the slope. I'm sorry, when x is negative pi over 4, I could plug that in for x. And the y value there. I guess that's what I'm trying to find. Okay, so then I would need to plug in another point that I knew, like negative 3 0. Plug in any point that was on that line. So it looks like not just some negative number, but it's pi over 12 minus 1. So pi over 12 minus 1 minus 1 is definitely less than 0. I don't know what pi over 12 is as a decimal, but I know it's way less than 2. So again, most important thing is each one of these parts, wherever you got stuck, that's the thing that you need to give yourself a reminder on. Write something out, add it to your study guide, 
You probably will not see an FRQ that has these exact same questions, but you are likely to see FRQs that ask you to use the same skills. So, particularly this part that was highlighted. That seemed to hold y'all back the most.